You are listening to WTUZ Radio Podcast. Welcome to WTUZ Radio Podcast. I am your host, Rhonda, and today's topic, we're picking back up on our series, Black uh, Royals and Rulers, Black, I'm sorry, (laughs) Black Royals, Bloodline and Rulers, Part 7. So we're on Part 7 of this series, and we left off on Queen Marjorie, uh, or more specifically, they're calling her Countess Marjorie. So the main source for this particular series is uh, the Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles uh, by Dr. John L. Johnson. Okay, so if this is your first time uh being with us on this series, just to, I, I encourage you to go back to the beginning. But um, we started out this series going over uh, the very origins of the British and Scotland Empire and how that particular empire was of melanated people and where they came from. All right. So if you are familiar with this platform, we have for years gone over how history has been rewritten. It's been changed. And specifically when it comes to Europe, how the original rulers were not Caucasian, a.k.a. white. It was really melanated. Okay. Uh, We also got into specifics on when exactly the Caucasian rulership came into play. And that is not only in Europe, but that is in the Americas as well. All right. So for this particular series, uh, it started out. And again, the source is Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles by Dr. John L. Johnson. Uh, You can go pick this book up uh, on Amazon as well. So uh, just to get into the prefix a little bit, the first man whom the Ethiopians and Egyptians call Atam, the Hebrew Atam, and the Christian Adam was created on the continent of Africa, the Nordic race to be of the Euro-African species, claiming that the European people had originated in Africa itself. Now, I just find it really, really interesting that as we are getting into this material, and specifically we talk about melanated rulership, uh, not only in Europe, but also in the Americas. And we talk about the indigenous people of America. The original indigenous people of America were also melanated. And we get a lot of pushback. And it's always uh, go back to Africa. But yet, <laughs> it's folks want to pick and choose how and when they want to tell someone to go back to Africa, okay? So with that said, uh, we're still just going to continue on, just giving you a highlight of how we started this series. Uh, So he's uh, quoting a source from uh, Race Prejudice, page 99, and this was in 1905, says the pride of Europe is only a direct fruit of Negro race. And another source, the influence of the geographic environments, the long head of the Northern Europe is regarded now by ethnologists as a short of the headed brunette Mediterranean race of African origin which bleached out under the pale sun of the Scandinavian skies. Okay. All right. So just uh, giving you some of the um, 
sources and how we started out this series, or rather how the author started out this series. So he gets into the particular dynasties of Scotland and uh, Britain. And it started with the Alpine dynasty, now today known as the Alpine dynasty, uh, ruled by the Pitts who were described as a short, pygmoid, dark-skinned people. The Scottish archaeologist David McRitchie stressed that during the 10th century, Alpin, the father of Kenneth McAlpin, was of half-black Pitts and of half-black Scott whose son Kenneth was the first to merge the two foremost branches of the blacks in Scotland. Okay, so again, he is giving you the original origins of the rulers of Scotland and the British Isle. Okay, so all of those, the, the empires that you see today are direct descendants or were were appointed from these original rulers melanated aka black rulers all right so we left off on countess marjorie all right there you are okay let's get to her so uh, Marjorie, the Moorish Countess Marjorie, was a dark-skinned Pitts woman. Okay, and throughout this series, it's been consistent that the Pitts were also dark. The daughter of Neo or Nigel. Okay, I learned something new. So that name, Neo, is a derivative of Niger. That's interesting. So, the daughter of Neil, the Earl of Carrack, who was a son of Donachad. I think that was also Donald, but don't quote me on that. Uh, no, I guess I'm, I'm wrong. Same as Duncan, meaning swathy, black, or dark-skinned warrior. Okay, so even Duncan means swathy, black, or dark-skinned. The Moorish princess married Robert de Bruce and gave birth to a son named Robert de Bruce, who became the first king of the Scottish Bruce dynasty. The princess' grandson, David II, became the second king of the House of Bruce. Her granddaughter, Princess Margaret, also called Marjorie, married Walter Stuart VI and became the mother of Robert II, who became Scotland's first steward king. So let's go and look at the dynasties again. Okay, and we're going to get a little bit into Robert the Bruce. All right, uh, so this is from the archive. And this lists out the monarchs. And what we have been doing in this series is cross-referencing the uh, dynasties that are laid out by um, Dr. John L. Johnson in his book with this particular source as well that's listing all of the, the dynasties or the houses or the monarchs uh, to not only cross-reference but also to uh, go over some that weren't discussed by Dr. John L. Johnson and vice versa, because he had some that weren't in, was not in here. So as you can see, uh, just like he stated, just like Dr. John L. Johnson stated in his book, that it started with McAl Penn, okay, Kenneth, all right? So that was the house or the monarch, McAlpin, um, the house of Dunkeld, uh, the house of Balaal, the house of Bruce, 
which is where we are right now. Okay, so you could see in the House of Bruce that there were two rulers, Robert the Bruce, that's where we are now, and then we're going to talk about David. Okay, so, and just a reminder to the fam, remember these particular houses are sanctioned by the different kings. And not all of these houses are direct descended bloodlines. Some of them are appointed, uh, some through marriage, and some are uh, um, appointed based on a political strategic power, all right? So just also wanted to note that as well. Okay, so let's jump back over. All right, so uh, it was the Stuart dynasty that brought forth today's King James Version of the Bible, which was authorized and named after the black man named King James Stuart. The Bruce dynasty was a direct descendant of David I, who was the youngest son of Malcolm III. David I was the great, 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 <laughs> great grandnephew of the Pittish king, or the Pitts King, Niger Kenneth Duff, Dub, Black or Duffy. Okay, so let's just jump back over. Look at the monarchs. Okay, again, the McAlpine. Kenneth was the first that started the monarchy in Scotland and England. Okay. All right. Okay. And just as again, as a reminder that dub means black. Okay. So you see all of these names, Kenneth the Niger. Uh, you all know what Niger means. Uh, Dunn. Also means black. You see that in here. Um, so just a reminder, if, if you just look at the names, it keeps describing how the people looked. Okay. All right. So let's just jump back over real quick. There were many black-skinned women mentioned in the Scottish an annals. One was the rena renowned warrior Black Agnes, who viciously fought the British at Dunbar. She was called Black because of her hair and skin and other African features. All right. Okay, so um, there you have it with Marjorie, Countess Marjorie, who married Robert the Bruce. Okay, and they're going through the lineage. All right, so let's get there. Let's get to Robert. Okay, so Robert the First, the Catholic Moorish Robert the First, better known as Robert the Bruce, 1306 to 1329, was the son of Robert the Bruce, Earl of Carrick, uh, by right of his dark skin, Pitt's wife, Marjorie the daughter of Neil, Niger, or Niall, or Niall Black. So that's interesting. Y'all catching that? Neil means black. We know Niger means black. Niall Black, who was the son of Don Chad, same as Duncan and so Duncan meaning swarthy, black, or dark-skinned warrior. The Bruce dynasty was a direct descendant of David I, who was the youngest son of Malcolm III. King David I was the great-great-great-great-grandnephew of Niger Kenneth Dub. Robert the Bruce, who was the great-great-grandson of David I, became the father of David II, who succeeded him. 
Bruce's dark-skinned daughter, Margaret, also called Marjorie, married Walter Stewart VI and became the mother of Robert II, who became Scotland's first Stuart king. King Robert the Bruce, Bruce's chief lieutenant and friend, Sir James Douglas, who fought in the Scottish Wars of Independence, was called Black Douglas because of his deep black skin. His father, brothers, and offspring were also described as having a black complexion. All right, so let's just jump back over again to show you what house or monarch Robert was in. Okay, so you can see that the uh, Robert the Bruce, they literally had their own house with two rulers. The House of Bruce, Robert I, the Bruce, and then succeeding him was David II. All right. So, again, uh, the Bruce dynasty was a direct descendant of David I, who was the youngest son of Malcolm III, and all of them roll up to who? Niger Kenneth Dub. The start, the house of McAlpine or McAlpine, Kenneth McAlpine or McAlpine was the start of the monarchs of Scotland and England. All right, so let's just see what Britannia. A Britannica has to say rather about Robert the Bruce. Okay, so as we can see, they have him depicted as white, but all the descriptions describe them as swarthy, dark skin. Okay, and all of his ancestors, dark, swarthy. Okay, but let's continue. Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland. Robert the Bruce, originally named Robert the, what's that, eighth, the Bruce, the Bruce, or the Bruce, also called Robert the First, born, yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, King of Scotland, who freed Scotland from England rule, winning the decisive battle of... Bannockburn, and ultimately confirming Scottish independence on the Treaty of Northampton. Uh, so it's just going into his heritage. The Anglo-Norman family of Bruce, which had come to Scotland in the early 12th century, was related by marriage to the Scottish royal family, and hence the sixth Robert de Bruce, Oh, okay, so they're saying um, grandfather of the future king claimed the throne when it was left vacant in 1293. The English king, Edward I, claimed feudal superiority over the Scots and awarded the crown to John D. Balal instead. Okay, so we're just going to jump back. Oops, sorry about that. And look at the monarch. All right, so you could just see how this is flowing. Okay. All right, so you could see that um, Balaw was the only one of that house that ruled for that period of time, and it was a very short period of time. And then that's when the house of Bruce came in. So in other words, war was breaking out among these monarchs and family, because at the end of the day, uh, these houses have to be approved, okay, by ruler leaderships and specifically the kings. And if the king puts in a monarch that folks don't agree with, and particularly and especially if 
that house is not related by bloodline or if somebody felt they got skipped over for rulership, as soon as that um, powerful king or whomever transitions, then war breaks out. Okay, so that's what happened in this case. So that particular house, uh, Bilal, only ruled for that one leadership until uh, Robert the Bruce came in and took back over. Okay, um, although you can see, actually, it was twice. So they was going back and forth. <laughs> they were literally going back and forth. All right. So I'm just trying to see how much more I'm going to read of this. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not going to read through the rest of this. Okay. Uh, that's that. Okay. I'm not going to go through that because we can go down a, a big rabbit hole, which I don't want to do. Okay. So... Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I will read through this part. The dark king of Alba, Scotland, Robert the Bruce, suffered from a skin disease that caused him to peel, which afterwards resulted to a flaky silver white buildup on the top of the plaque called scales. His condition was consequence was a consequence of leprosy, which appeared to be similar to the same disease mentioned in the Bible. However, some historians have identified the dreadful disease as psoriasis. That's what I thought of when they said flaky skin. Psoriasis. Robert the Bruce believed he was divinely cursed for the act of luring his rival, John Comyn, the red in a church, and then taking him out on a sacred altar. He never forgave himself for such treachery and insisted that upon his death that his heart be removed and buried in Melrose Abbey while his bonds at rest at Dunfermline Abbey. The word Alba, which was uh, anciently addressed to Scotland, is ambiguity, ambiguity, having more than one interpretation. The old term Alba, besides referring to Scotland, also means white albino. Now, that's interesting. Indicating that some people of Scotland was white-looking Negroes. That is very, very interesting. Because when we talk about where did the quote-quote Caucasian race come from and Oh, you hear all of these uh, things, uh, but bottom line, it is a form of albinism, okay? So that's interesting, an albinism. So meaning the Caucasian race came out of Africa, and it was just a form of albinism, and folks with albinism kept having children with other folks that had the condition of albinism. And, quote, quote, the Caucasian race was created, okay? Because in Africa, folks with albinism were ostracized, okay? So I find this very interesting that the word Alba is associated, so the, the old term Alba, besides referring to Scotland, also means white albino, indicating that some people of Scotland was white-looking Negroes, okay? So, and that's why even more I find it hilarious when you have folks specifically uh, Caucasian, and, and even when melanated people do it also, talk about all black people come out of Africa when Caucasian and even melanated people don't even understand that whites come out of Africa. 
But I know that's another discussion. But uh, that's interesting about the term Alba and the connections to uh, albinism or white albino. All right, so European, I'm sorry, Euro scholars have exploited the term Alba in reference to a complexion to only indicate white instead of albino white. Okay, um, so just real quick, John Comnene's Kam father was called John the Black because of his black skin. Their deviant complexion can be compared to the biblical Isaac Jason, Jacob and the reddish Esau. So he's just going in to say a genetic disorder, a white complexioned Negro whose parents are jet black. Remember, the earlier occupiers of Scotland were African Negroes whom parented a few white albinos whom themselves continued the process. According to Ali Man in his book called Guzman D. Alfranchi, albino Negroes were called white Negroes. Okay. So, again, it's just really at this point becoming laughable at folks telling other folks wh what their heritage is. And this goes to anyone, whether or not uh, you're black, white, uh, whatever you want to call yourself. It is laughable at this point. When it is truly based on your family lineage and your genetics. Literally. So you have groups of people running around saying everybody's out of Africa. You have groups of people saying if your skin is a.k.a. dark, black, coffee, caramel, ruddy, you're out of Africa. But if your skin is pale, Milky, you're out of Europe. But then folks will turn around and say everybody's out of Africa. When literally the Caucasian race was derived, what we're calling the Caucasian race today, was derived from a condition called albinism. which the condition of albinism literally does come out of Africa, which still happens today. But let's continue. So that's interesting. Okay, so let's continue. So let's get to David the second. Uh, David II, the Christian Moorish King David II was the son of the successor of Robert the Bruce. He married at the age of four to seven years old, Joan, the daughter of Edward II. So I do also want to point out in uh, this series, we also noted, noted that sometimes when these different houses were created, and it wasn't by a direct bloodline. So it was either through marriage or it was through uh, political means. A lot of times it was created because there was not a successor. So meaning there was not a bloodline successor to take the throne. And that was usually because these particular uh, monarchs, they were always going to war, right? Always going to war, okay? So how much 
power in this case? How much power could David II have when he took the throne at age five? In AD 1332, he was dethroned, my point exactly, but a year later restored only to be overthrown a second time, which forced him to free France. In AD 1341, he and his wife Joan returned to Scotland and were once again reinstated to power, but due to poor, poor judgment of attacking England, he was defeated and taken captive. He remained, in, uh, he remained in prisoner in England for the next 11 years before he was freed for the enormous price of 100,000 mercs. Ooh, child, that was a lot of uh, coins. <laughs> no pun intended. There was a lot of coins back in the day. The king died in 1371 and was succeeded by his nephew, Robert II, who was the 18th great grand uncle of Elizabeth II. All right, so that's David II. So let's just jump back over to the tree. Okay, so you see this is the house of Bruce. Okay, so Bruce transitioned and you see David took over Robert the Bruce's son, but he sat on that throne very, very early. And then you can see where this particular person, so meaning one of the um, relatives of the house of Bilal, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, came in and swooped in and took over temporarily for this young king, David II, that was only five. Okay? So war was breaking out again. Because remember, Robert the Bruce took it from uh, Belial. Okay? And then uh, they came back and took it from his son, who was five. And then uh, they came back and took it again. So just to give you all a flavor on how the infighting went on among these monarchs, but what we also have to understand is that not all of these monarchs are um, blood-related. Some of them were appointed or they are related through marriage. Okay? All right, so I think we're going to get into the stewards, and we're just going to start here because I do want to uh, do more extensive on the stewards. So uh, Robert Stewart II, we're going to introduce the stewards in this, the steward monarchy, uh, and then this is where we're going to stop and we'll pick back up with the stewards. Okay, Robert II Steward, the Negro Moorish Catholic King Robert II Steward was the first steward King of Scotland. He succeeded his uncle David II, the son of Robert the Bruce, whose father was Robert the Bruce Earl of Carrick a descendant of the Negro Moorish King David I, who was the great, 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 great grandnephew of the Scottish King Kenneth the Niger. The name Stuart means black. It comes from the Norse word swarft. Uh, you know that swath? Swarft. Black swath. So I just learned something new also. Swathed also means black. Swath means black. Swathy means black. Robert second Robert the second son, John Stewart, was called Black Steward 
because of his black complexion. The colorful king, Robert II Stuart, is the 17th great-great-grandfather of Elizabeth II. Okay? So, we're going to jump back. Just to remind folks, look at the monarch. So, here's the Stuarts. Sorry. Here's the Stuarts. So Robert II starts this Stuart bloodline. Okay. And you can see Robert II, they're descendants of Robert the Bruce, who they tie back to who? The House of McAl Penn or McAl Pine, Kenneth McAl Penn. Okay? So we're going to end here because I really want to um, get into the stewards a little bit more deeper. Uh,. That's what we're going to get into. And I'll, I'll bring up, maybe I'll go back and even get a little bit more info on Robert II, Stewart. And to be honest, I didn't even know into doing this series that um, Robert II was a steward. Okay. All right. So again, the source for this particular series, the main source is the Negro rulers of Scotland and the British Isle. Uh, by Dr. John L. Uh, Johnson. Uh, just let me uh, go back so you can see the cover. Mm, I was hoping it'll let you see the cover of it. Here's the cover of the book, The Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles by Dr. John L. Johnson. Uh, you can pick the book up at Amazon. Uh, we're also cross-referencing this work from um, Internet Archives, the kings and queens of ancient Britain. Okay. And then we're also using the Britannica as a source to get just a little bit more detail on the individual kings. All right. So we will pick back up in part eight. We're going to get into the stewards. All right. Uh, so... With that said, I'm going to end it on that note, fam. Uh, I'm wishing everyone well on this Tuesday. And I hope you are getting some value out of this series. And I do want to send a shout out and thank you to the family that's in the comment sections that you are dropping a lot more jewels. It is truly, truly appreciated. Uh, I know someone dropped a jewel and it's coming up what you put in the comment section regarding someone being married to one of the stewards. Um, I'm sure it's coming up very shortly uh, in the next drop that we're going to do on this. So thank you to all, to everyone in the comment section that are giving out wonderful, wonderful jewels and information. It's truly appreciated. I hope everyone is getting some value out of this. If you are not subscribed to us, I highly encourage you to like this video, share, and subscribe. Uh, this is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast. Peace and love, family.